Thank you, Dr. Crystal, for those wonderful remarks. And it reminds me um, that all of us are members of the community. As uh, Perry was saying, it is the Advocacy Month, and um, we can all be advocates for uh, continuing support and funding um, and finding treatment for individuals that are suffering from mental illness. Before um, we really get the presentations underway, I know every year we have people that attend because they just heard that maybe a family member received a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder, or maybe they have a new patient who has this diagnosis, and they're coming to this conference to learn um, different ways that treatment can be implemented and to learn about this disorder. And so we like to start off every conference with just a rundown of what this disorder is, at least according to the DSM. Um, the definition of borderline personality disorder in the DSM-5 is that it's a pervasive pattern of relationship or self-image or affective instability it's mar and marked uh, impulsivity that's indicated by five or more of the following symptoms. As you can see, the symptoms are very diverse. Um, they include efforts to avoid abandonment, unstable and intense interpersonal relationships, identity disturbance, uh, dangerous impulsivity in at least two areas um, that are not related to recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures, threats, or self-mutilation, which is a separate criteria. Affective instability due to this kind of marked reactivity of mood. Um, chronic feelings of emptiness, inappropriate or intense anger or difficulty controlling that anger, and transient or stress-related paranoia or severe dissociative symptoms. And if you look at this very heterogeneous mix of criteria, we find that we can kind of boil it down in some ways to three general areas of dysfunction, unstable relationships, affective dysregulation, and difficulties with impulse control. And as you listen to the presentations today, you'll see that different presentations are focusing on different aspects of the symptom presentation. If we look at how common BPD is, uh, generally I talk about how common it is in adults at this conference. And as you can see, it's typically 1 to 2 percent in the general population. And clinical studies show that it's about 10 percent of outpatients and about 20 percent of inpatients in adults. But one of the reasons that we felt it was so important to cover the topic that we are covering today is because of the prevalence rates that you see on the right. In adolescents and community studies, although it, in some studies it's around 1%, other studies really recurrently show that it can be as frequent as 3% in adolescents. And clinical studies show that as high as 22% of outpatients and up to 49%, so almost half of all inpatients meet criteria for this disorder. So this really speaks to why this conference is so important uh, in addressing the needs of children and adolescents with these potential sy symptoms. You're also going to hear about a new DSM-5 definition, disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, which is a, which is a potential adolescent um, kind of pre-morbid characteristic to this, um, a potential alternative way to conceptualize and diagnose the related symptoms. So to tell you a little bit about today's presentations, we're going to take a developmental arc that starts from infancy and goes to adolescence. In the morning, Dr. Slade, a member of the Yale Child Study Center, will discuss Minding the Baby, which is an intervention for new at-risk mothers to reduce the risk of attachment problems and improve health outcomes in their infants. Uh, next up will be Dr. Para Plechikova, who is a former postdoctoral fellow here at Yale who is now an assistant professor at Weill Cornell in Westchester. She very recently uh, finished a project in which she has modified DBT principles and developed new adaptations that are appropriate for children as young as seven years old. She'll tell us a little bit about that intervention today. Um, following that, we have two speakers who will tell us a little bit about their, uh, their lived experiences with BPD. Alison Bree Fennelly will share her personal experiences of living with this disorder and treatment. And Jennifer Brick will give her experiences as a mother of a child who was part of the initial treatment study I just mentioned for DBT for children for disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. In the afternoon, um, we, will, uh, we will have talks from Dr. Carla Sharp, who's going to tell us a little bit about the science behind and the application of mentalizing interventions. And following her will be Dr. Miller. Um, who will discuss recent advancements in DBT for adolescents. 
Um, and after that, we'll have a panel discussion. Um, let's see. So next up, I'm gonna have Dr. Axelrod take over. He's the moderator of the day, and we are so pleased to have Seth back with us. You might have remember that he was not with us last year, but we are very grateful for the fact that he has returned. Um, so please join me in welcoming Seth for the rest of the moderation. Thank you very much, Emily. Um, I could not be more delighted to have our conference, our annual conference, entering its 11th year, to have all of you with us, all of our speakers, all the people that make this happen. Um, I would like to thank Dr. Crystal for joining us with opening remarks, uh, and the Costellos, Matt and Anne, for speaking about family connections. I want to say a quick um, thank you to my co-directors, uh, to uh, Perry Hoffman, representing National Education Alliance, who is an extremely humble person who really tries to avoid the spotlight, and I want to say is really um, a hero in terms of bringing education about these problems, about the treatments uh, around nationally, internationally, uh, uh, providing congressional briefings that have led to things like the, uh, the United States House of Representatives declaring May Borderline Personality Disorder Awareness Month, uh, also working with SAMHSA to bring uh, BPD into focus and its treatments, bringing it to NAMI so that it's recognized as a major mental illness. So I, I really want to uh, say that, uh, uh, that this conference, uh, the entire idea of it, is completely based on uh, what Perry has done with, with making this organization. So I want to express thank you there. I want to also express um, an, the other person who has been speaking so far uh, in introducing the conference, uh, Dr. Emily Ansel. Uh, who uh, I was so happy got involved with the conferences several years back and kind of helping out, helping make it happen. It's a huge endeavor. And then last year, uh, really um, stepped up in my absence. I was having health issues, and she made the conference happen. And it's a huge, huge undertaking. And the reality is that this year as well, she's made this conference happen. And I'm incredibly uh, thrilled, delighted, indebted. I, I certainly have. Uh, joined her in doing it, but, but she really uh, just deserves a, a huge recognition uh, for making today happen. So I want to acknowledge her. Um, I uh, am going to take a few moments to touch base on uh, some logistics related to uh, continuing education credits and some requirements we have for just making sure that everyone's aware of a few points. Um, this, is, this paragraph is in your packets. It describes um, what the policies are of making sure that we're um, being very open about any potential conflicts of interest in terms of any of the presenters, including myself, in terms of whether there's any personal gain or anything like that. And um, so you can read that. Um, this following statement is part of the process. Uh, this conference will address advances in family and individual treatments and interventions that support children and adolescents with borderline personality disorder features and their family members. In order to receive continuing education units, you must attend the full program day. Sponsorship of this conference was provided by Clearview Treatment Centers and Silver Hill Hospital. In addition, we disclose that our presenters and planners have the following potential conflicts of interest that are also included in your conference program. And these include uh, myself and uh, Dr. Alec Miller, who will be with us, who have had uh, contracts, royalties related to, uh, from Guilford Press, who also uh, do training consultation through uh, behavioral tech, um, and uh, Francesca, who's an, uh, Dr. Francesca Paraplechikova, is another of our presenters, who's also recently um, started doing some training through behavioral tech. So you'll be hearing about certain uh, treatments, and those treatments are connected to some of these things where we potentially undo, uh, uh, make uh, personal gain. So to be aware of that and in case that influences anything. 